Not bad. How you doing, Mike? I am okay. But you know what? This is why I love this segment. We get to learn about things that we hear about but know nothing about. Like <laughs> when somebody <laughs> says Muay Thai to me, I have to think, okay, yeah, I, I think that is a fighting style, but it could also be something with dumplings. I'm not sure exactly which. Or, or a delicious cocktail to be taken after dinner. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So when, when we're talking about Muay Thai, what are we talking about? Okay, so basically I think uh, we can put it together. Uh, I think most of you, your listeners heard the UFC or watched the UFC. It's the stand-up portion. So it's, it's kickboxing where you can use, uh, it's called the science of eight limbs. So you can use your hands for punching, you can use your elbows for elbows, knees, and uh, both your legs for kicking. <laughs> I was trying so, to count them up as you were saying. Yeah. Eight limbs, okay. Well, uh, all right. So in other words, it is, you have to be on your feet to be doing Muay Thai. Yes. Yes, there's no takedown. So it's uh, it's similar to boxing, of course, but you can kick knee and elbow. So it's a little more uh, vicious. Okay. And in training for something like that, is that something that you could do just to keep yourself in shape? Or if you're going to train for Muay Thai, you're eventually going to be trying to kick another human? Oh, well, well there's two kind of schools of thought on it. You can definitely use the stay in shape uh, we, we have a whole bunch of people. I would say 90% of the people who do it uh, will never fight. Um, some people, they come in, want to stay in shape, and, but they end up saying, well, oh, I kind of like this, and they end up going to uh, fight competitively. So it kind of really runs the gamut on it. I know uh, on, on your uh, website you guys have different training videos, and the thing that I find kind of cool about it is it looks a lot of times like it's nothing – so foreign that none of us would ever have done it before. You know, a lot of jumping and everything like that. But at the same time, you also throw in some other elements. When you're training an athlete, what what are some of the elements that would be exclusively beneficial for a Muay Thai fighter? Right. So uh, when you're punching, when you're kicking, all the power really comes from the hips. A lot of a big misconception is that when you're punching, you're, it's going to come from the shoulders, it's going to come from the hands. No, you want to put your whole body into it. And the hips are the powerhouse of the body. Same with kicks. You're rotating, you're using the hips to get it out there, even elbows, even knees. Everything has to come from the hips because that's where most of your power is generated. So what we try and do is we try and do a lot of explosive movements, try and get the weights up there quick, try and develop a lot of strength from the hips, a lot of squatting, a lot of, a lot of Olympic lifting, um, things like that. So it's, it's very specialized to kind of get the hips moving, but they not only get them strong, but moving fast to really generate that power. We're talking with Costa Claudianos, who is with Tempest Performance. This is the main event, and it is for Alliance Sports, Martial Arts, and Fitness Supply. You can find them at 176 York Street. You can find them online at alliancesportsonline.com. Costa, how about when we're talking about explosiveness in a person? Some people just seem to be born with an explosiveness. Can you actually develop that? You can definitely uh, develop it. I mean, there is a genetic... There's a genetic component to it. I mean, there's some guys who are just naturally going to pick it up. But then you can definitely train your body to kind of move into that area. I know for myself, I really have no natural genetic sports ability whatsoever. Um, But I was able to kind of train myself and to kind of develop that aspect. Um, And with hard work, it can definitely be done. I've seen it on so many people. It's just you have to do the right kind of training, get the right kind of recovery in, and just kind of work hard just like at anything else. I want to tell you where a lot of people be scared off uh, in Muay Thai is you always see the videos of, of the guys training and, you know, you see the guys over in, in Taiwan or whatever training, kicking banana trees to kill all the nerves in their shins and stuff, stuff along those lines. I, I mean, realistically, that's not really a, a huge aspect of the actual training, is it? No, absolutely not. I mean... Uh, the reason that you'll see the guys in Thailand kicking the banana trees is the banana tree is actually really soft. It's a young banana tree, and it probably has the same consistency as a punching bag. And some, and in the old school, they couldn't afford the punching bag, so they were actually just kicking the banana trees. Uh, <laughs> to, to kill the nerves in their shins, what they used to do is roll a Coke bottle up and down. No one does that anymore. It's become, it's become like a real sport now you, through... Um, through years of kind of kicking the bag and kicking pads and through sparring, you'll actually get your bones um, a lot harder. And so instead of killing your nerves and possibly getting a lot of trouble later on in life, you want to develop those bones to get them actually harder for you, which will actually help you later in life to prevent things such as osteoporosis. Hmm. Um, The the other thing, this is going to be kind of a silly question, but uh, there are probably some of us that not knowing kind of the inner circle of Muay Thai, who are the big names in Muay Thai? Who are the big fighters right now? Uh, well, we actually have an up-and-coming um, Canadian guy. He's former Canadian national champion. I, this is the guy I do the uh, strength and conditioning for. Uh, his name is 
Joseph Altolini uh, goes by the name of Bazooka Joe. He's undefeated. He's a professional now. Um, we actually have to go down to, he fights in New York City. Uh, he was the IKF Amateur World Champion. And he'll be fighting next week against a guy by the name of Sean Hines, who actually trains under George St. Pierre's uh, Muay Thai coach. So they'll be fighting next week in Manhattan. And that's actually a big fight on the pro Muay Thai scene. So we have a lot of talent here in Canada. Um, around the world, probably the big guy is um, Yotsin Klai. He's out of uh, Thailand, and he fights over in Japan and K1. So I think um, there's definitely a lot of talent here in North America to be had, and it would be good to get some more exposure for it because it's a really exciting sport. I mean, you watch in UFC, people are cheering when they're punching and kicking. When they go down to the ground, people start booing. So, I mean, right there, you see that there's a potential for it. We are talking with Costa Claudianos from Tempest Performance, and we're talking about Muay Thai. And this is the main event for Alliance Sports. You can find them online, alliancesportsonline.com, or at 176 York Street in London. Costa, what has UFC done for something like Muay Thai? Can you put it into words? Sure. I think it, it's brought combat sports into the mainstream, whereas before people kind of looked at it in like, oh, that's just kind of for thugs fighting. But now you kind of see with shows like The Ultimate Fighter, um, it's mostly for mixed martial arts, for jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai as well. Uh, it just shows that these guys are real athletes. This is a real sport. This is kind of, they look at boxing as a sweet science. Well, now they see that all the other martial arts, which is jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, are a science. There's, a, there's really an, a, a huge athletic component behind it, and there's not just a couple of guys going in the ring and beating each other up. They're, they train as hard and harder than all other athletes. And, I mean, it's a lot of work, and you've got to appreciate their efforts. And it's pretty fun to watch. As a last note, you have to be a Leafs fan because you used to work for them in strength and conditioning. <laughs> Do you watch the guys and, and watch maybe the game in a different way to see how their conditioning is in the third period? Can you help yourself with that? Um, no, that's definitely uh, going to stick uh, with me. Uh, I used to work with the uh, great Matt Nickel there uh, as, um, in the, some strength and conditioning, and I, I think... You can condition and you can get those guys as strong as you want, but in the end, it's how they're going to make the plays, how they're going to put it in the net, right? You can you substitute for the talent. And I think they, they have a good young base. Um, I think uh, Brian Burke has the right idea. And the problem with people from southern Ontario is uh, patience kind of runs thin. So <laughs> <laughs> well, well, <laughs> you've got to give it a couple of years. <laughs> here's the other thing that Costa probably loves as well. After he left, the Leafs started getting even worse. So it's obviously <laughs> their conditioning slipped, right? <laughs> I have no comment on that. <laughs> Can Muay Thai teach patience? Yes, um, it absolutely does. You have to be patient in the ring because if you go in there and you just go kicking and punching like crazy in the first minute, well, you got five more rounds. You're gonna, there's nothing worse than being in the ring and being tired and not being able to defend yourself, I'll tell you that much. If you are a frustrated Leaf fan... Take up Muay Thai, and by the time that you move up the ranks a little bit and understand the discipline, maybe, just maybe, there'll be a parade booked. Costa, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, guys.